Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, Thank you. You can sit down. <coughs> All right, then today we'll be looking at uh, plotting inequalities on a number line. But before we do that, I need to go through some mistakes I did in the previous lesson. The first one, if you can have a look at your worksheet, is <coughs> on table B, table number two, where you were told to write um, the number 0 0.08017 to one significant figure. I think to two significant figures and three significant figures, our answers were correct. Okay, I said the answer was 0.1, which is wrong. Okay, to two significant, sorry, to one significant figure, the first significant figure here is eight. Okay, zero is considered insignificant because it's a, it's, it's a, the digit is zero. So if you look at this number, which is the second significant figure, it's zero, so you can't increase this by one. So it remains as 0 0.08 to one significant figure. Okay, just make sure you change that and you are clear on what to do. Another one. The question that says 29 divided by 0 0.074. Okay, the answer to that should be 30 divided by 0 0.07 to one significant figure. And then the answer to one significant figure should be 400. I think I said um, 300. <clears throat> the next one, the one that says 134 times 2.68 divided by 37.1 <clears throat> times 0 0.12. I also made a mistake. It should be 100 multiplied by 3. <coughs> Excuse me. Divided by 40 times to one significant figure, this is 0 0.1, which is 300 divided by 4, which is 75, right? To one significant figure, it is 80. So make sure you take note of those mistakes and correct them on your exercise books. <clears throat> Is there any other mistakes I've ma I made on that exercise? No? <clears throat> okay, we now have to go on to the, the exercise you were given for homework. Question one, 54.7 plus 167.78 to one decimal place. Esther, your answer, please. 225.5. 222, I think, not five. 222.5. Number two, Rita? 100. Are you sure? Okay, just so that um, we are clear on this one. If you take away 6.4 from 107, you get 100.6. Okay. The first significant figure is 1. The second significant figure here is what? Zero. Zero. Are you sure? Yes. And the third? So what's the answer to two significant figures? Okay, let's try another one. 
to two significant figures. What's the answer? To two significant figures, what will the answer for this one be? It will be 100. OK, to two significant figures, what's this one going to be? Is it still 100? OK. If this is, because we want it to two significant figures. If it was to one significant figure, the answer will be 100. If it was to two significant figures, is the answer still going to be 100? What about two, three significant figures? It will still be 100. Sorry, 101. Because to three significant figures, we look at the fourth number. OK, thank you for correcting me. So the answer is 100. So long as we are clear, it's 100. OK, good. Let us see Geno. 16.95. 16.95 to two decimal places is correct. Letter D, did everyone do that as addition? Division. Division. OK. Yeah, they should all be division, but they probably all plus this year. Just so, that, so long as we are making it clear for those students who are Watching. Okay, Daniel, if it is division, what's your answer? Zero point zero one six. Zero point zero one six to two significant figures. So that plus should be division and not plus. Boromio, letter E2 is also supposed to be division. One hundred and ninety point zero. One hundred and ninety. Ninety. To three significant figures, one hundred and ninety. Yes, do you need the point zero? No. Okay, one hundred and ninety to three significant figures. Natasha, six. 0 0.2. 0 0.2. Again, to those watching, that should be division sign as well. Letter G. 96.2 times 15.3. Jake. 1,500. 1,500 is correct. H. 0 0.007. 0 0.007. That's 0 0.432 divided by 64. That's correct. Letter I, Siegfried. 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is correct. And again, it's 46.9512 divided by 85. Letter J. 7 million. 7 million, 246. Yes, 7 million. That's the one significant figure. It's correct. And it's 56,000 divided by 0 0.008. Any questions? No? OK. So what we're supposed to do today, plotting inequalities on a number line. OK, I want you to try and get this right as much as you can. Because in grade 12, what we do is we plot inequalities, but on graphs. And later on this year, you are going to solve equations which have the inequality sign. OK. The equation sign is this. An inequality sign is either greater than or less than. It means they're not equal to, but it's either greater than or less than. So those two signs are inequality signs. OK. Sometimes you can have greater than or equal to. And also, less than or equal to. OK. I've just started off with plotting some points. On the, or by plotting some points. On the number line below, if I were to plot um, x1 here, which is 2, 
and x2 here, which is minus 1, x3, which is minus 1.5. I've plotted, hopefully I plotted them correctly. x1 is here, which is 2, x2, which is negative 1, and x3, which is negative 1.5. We all know from the first time we plotted number lines is that on the right-hand side are the positive numbers and on the left-hand side are negative numbers. In the middle of the positive numbers and the negative numbers, they should be zero. OK. Now we go on to plotting inequalities. On the number line, plot the inequalities. OK. If x is greater than zero, that means x will take all the numbers that are on the right-hand side of 2. So we are talking about 2.1. 2.2 and so on, so long as the number is greater than 2. So if I were to plot that on the number line, if you have a look at this, I've indicated that now. OK, we probably have something on the screen as well. OK. X if x is greater than 2, if you look at the number line that I've got, this is 0. I've called the number line x. This is 2. The numbers that are greater than 2 are on the right-hand side of 2. So we draw a circle at 2. Usually, it should be done right on the number line, but I find that very untidy. So what I do is I just draw it either above or below the line. It's still OK. So what I do is, uh, what you do is you draw a circle and then indicate by an arrow showing that all the numbers on the right-hand side of 2 are greater than 2. And you put a circle and you don't shade because shading means something else. That means 2 is not included here because it just says greater than 2. Now, if x is less than 1, if you have a look at this, it's the opposite direction because it now defines all the numbers that are less than 1, which means they'll be on the left-hand side of 1. All right, number 3, x is greater than, sorry, x is less than or equal to 0. If x is less than 0, then it must be on the left-hand side of 0. OK, if you look at this. This line here, x is less than or equal to 0. And note what I've done. When you put a circle and you shade it, that means either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, because it says x is less than or equal to 0. That means that 0 is included. That means the numbers must be either less than 0 or equal to 0. That's what less than or equal to means. Clear so far? All right, next. Minus 1. Minus 1 is less than x. At the same time, x is less than or equal to 2. OK, if minus 1, just look at this one, this side first. If minus 1 is less than x, then x must be greater than minus 1. It's not equal to 0. So, so if minus 1 is less than x, then we are saying x is greater than minus 1. So I have to remember that the numbers will have to be greater than minus 1. Minus 1 will be less than the values for x. OK, now, at the same time, x is less than or equal to 2. OK, we are talking about a set of numbers that are between minus 1 and positive 2, which means those numbers are greater than minus 1, but they are less than 2. OK, have a look at the number line. The numbers between minus 1 that means the numbers must be greater than minus 1, so they must be on the right-hand side of minus 1. 
But the numbers must be less than 2, which means they are on the left-hand side of 2, which means the numbers are between minus 1 and 2. But the numbers do not include minus 1. That's why I've got a circle there. But they include positive 2. That's why I've got it shaded. So this line represents the numbers between minus 1 and positive 2. Clear? OK. Next one. 2 is less than x, which is less than 4. The numbers must be greater than or equal to 2, and they must be less than 4. So the numbers are between 2 and positive 4. 2 is included. 2 is less than or equal to x, but 4 is not included because it just says the numbers must be less than 4. Okay, without writing that, I want you to... I want to see if you understood what I've done. I am going to write two questions on the board and see if you can do that quickly.
Mm, but then it is x is less than or equal to negative one. Less than. The other way around. That's greater than. Yeah. But that one it is less than. X is less than negative one. Is two greater than or less than negative one? Negative two is less than negative one. How come you've got the arrow pointing the the other way? Are we done? No? This is less than negative one, this is greater than x. No, the last one. Between zero and one is greater. You get it. So you have this one. Three or minus three. Yeah, that's it. That's the idea. Okay, but that one is not shaded. So you can't write less than or equal to, only less than. X is, yeah, B, X is greater than 3, yeah. How much time do I have? How much time do I have? Yeah. A, B, C. X is greater than 3. Yep. X is greater than 3. Yeah. Trust yourself. Okay, I want three people to come and draw on the number line that I've got on the board to answer question one, A, B, and C. Anyone for A? Nobody? X is less than or equal to negative one. Who wants to come and do letter A? Miriam, letter B, Kyle, letter C, Gabriel. Quick. Maybe see if you can use orange chalk. 
to make it. Yeah. Try. I wonder if it's. Is it clear? Maybe not. Okay, try one. not clear. Okay, just do it with white chalk. Okay, x is less than or equal to minus one. Okay. All right. The answer for A, X is less than or equal to negative 1. X is greater than 3. Correct? That's the circle there that is not shaded. That means 3 is excluded. And then minus 1 is less than X. Sorry, minus 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 3. That means the numbers will be between minus 1 and 3. Note that includes all the decimals between those numbers as well, not just the whole numbers. Please take note. OK. <clears throat> I'll go to the next one quickly. Question 2. You should have for number 1, x is greater than or equal to Zero. Number two is minus three is less than or equal to x, which is less than zero. Should be written as minus three is less than or equal to x, which is less than zero. Number four, sorry, number three, x is, sorry, y is greater than or equal to 2, then you should have the word and. I didn't give you an example because I wanted you to think. And y is less than negative 1. This one should be 1. It's right in front of my nose and I can't see it. OK, you should have y, because there are two. There's a break in between. So it's only the numbers on the right-hand side of 1 and on the left-hand side of negative 2. So you should have y is greater than or equal to 1 and y is less than negative 1. You must have the word and. OK, the worksheet has some notes on it, so please read. OK, the exercise that you need to do for homework. Go through the examples if you have to, please. You have to do question one. All the questions. Question two, all the questions. And question three, all of them for homework. All right, the keyword to the pilot teacher is inequalities. 
Okay, stand. Good afternoon, class. Thank you. You can go for your next lesson.